My name is Don Coyas, and I am a member of the Mohican Nation, and I'm from the Turtle Clan on my mother's side. And uh, I was told when I was very young, before that, we ever start anything, it's very important for us to do an opening. And so what I'd like to do before this series starts is to do an opening, but also to explain what an opening is and the purpose and the intent of an opening. And that an opening ceremony, what it allows us to do is to take that time to interconnect. In order to do this interconnectedness, then I'd like to explain uh, this is what we call an altar, or it's a sacred spot. And if you look down at the sacred spot, one of the things you will see is there is a big red cloth. And so when we form a circle, and when we are going to work on this interconnectedness, then there's two things that we're supposed to think about. The first thing we're supposed to think about when we look at the big red cloth is about the universe. And that the Creator made a universe, and that universe is very big. And that that universe is designed with, with a cycle system. Planets circle, the moon circles, cycle of life, baby, youth, adult, elder, seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. And then a part of that universe, there is an earth up upon which we live as human beings. And that everything then on the earth, it participates in an interconnected system. The little bugs are eaten by the bigger bugs, are eaten by the birds, are eaten by. And we all live in an interconnected system. So that whenever we start, then we need to realize that we are each a small part of something big. Because it's very easy sometimes for us to realize that we're, we think that we're the center of the universe and everything cycles around us. So if we think that we're the center of the universe and everything cycles around us, then you cannot interconnect. You are only able to interconnect whenever you realize consciously you are a small part of something big. That's what we connect to. Then the elders, they went on to explain that there's something big that the Creator made, that it functions according to a set of principles, according to a set of laws, and according to a set of values. So then it means everybody on the earth, then, we must live in harmony with these principle, laws, and values. So that's the first thing that we're supposed to think about when we set in a circle, for us to consciously say, I'm a small part of something big. Then you'll notice the next thing on this altar, there are four colors. There is red, yellow, black, and white. And what those four colors represent is the human race, and that there are four colors to the human race. In other words, there's only one race. There aren't four races, and that race happens to be the human. It just so happens that each one of us are different colors. Like flowers are all created equal. They're just different colors from each other, but they're flowers. You have trees, different types of trees. You have humans, different types of humans. So as we work together in this healing process, we need to realize as we go around this circle, everyone is welcome. If you are red, you're welcome. Yellow, you're welcome. Black, you're welcome. White, you're welcome. That everyone is welcome here. So we need then to also understand interconnectedness, everything we need to realize we're all part of one race, the human race. Then you will notice in the center of this altar there is a shell. And what that shell represents is the womb. It's the womb of the earth. And we believe that the earth has a frequency, it has a heartbeat. The old people say the heartbeat of the earth. And that we put that shell there to attract that heartbeat. That shape of that shell will make the heartbeat come. And when that heartbeat comes, that is the frequency of which interconnectedness happens. Maybe to make it make sense, if you had like an antenna dish, you see them sometimes, that round antenna dish is shaped like a shell. Then that frequency comes into that shell. So it takes a certain shape to attract certain frequencies. So a long time ago, the old people knew if you put a shell there, you would attract that heartbeat of the earth. And it's that slow rate, like the beat of a drum. That's what makes the, the heartbeat come here. And it's at that heartbeat where interconnectedness happens. Then you'll also notice inside of that shell, there is some sage leaves. And what sage is, is a, it's a leaves from a plant, sage plant. Now, we believe that every plant has a purpose. We know that pharmaceutical companies are always looking for the medicine in these plants so they can get that medicine and sell it. But a sage leaves, what it does is it has the ability to make calm. It's a calming medicine. 
Like some medicines are for headaches, some medicines for earaches. This medicine is a calming medicine. So we put this sage in here to make calm. And so I'm going to light this sage. And the reason we light the sage is, is by lighting the sage, that is how the medicine is released. Some plants, you soak them in water, and then you drink it as tea. And you'll notice that water changes color. So the medicine goes into the water, and you drink it. So every plant has a way to release the medicine. The medicine is kept secret or is kept intact until you do the thing to release it. So how we release the medicine in sage is by lighting it. So I'm going to go light this sage, and I will bring that sage bowl around to each of you to allow you to smudge. First of all, you cannot smudge wrong. So as I present to you that sage, I'd ask you to take that smoke and to bring it first into your heart area and then bring that sage up over your head. What that does, that connects the greatest distance that the human being must travel in its whole life, 18 inches from the head to the heart. Sometimes it takes us years to make that journey. So the sage helps to clear those two areas out, connect both the head and the heart. Uh, and that's the purpose uh, of the sage. Then we'll do the smudging with this eagle fan. And this was given to us by the elders. And we use this fan for us to remember, and as, like, as we go through this next two days, to remember the greatest learning occurs whenever we are willing to switch a point of view. That the universe is made up of many points of view. You have, like you have a mouse's point of view, you have an eagle's point of view. And that sometimes if we only get stuck in one point of view and we're not willing to switch points of view, then that's all you see. So we use this eagle's fan to remember there's also an eagle's point of view. So you have a mouse's point of view, an eagle's point of view. And there are different points of view. Like maybe if you listen to the moist mouse's point of view. See a mouse, he gets up in the morning, gets ready to go to work, or gets into recovery. Oh my God, I can't make no recovery. I, my life's all messed up. I can't get, I've been in a relationship. I'll never cover, I'll never make it. I'm doomed, it's gone, everything's gone forever. I'm whatever. So if you hear that mouse talk, that's the way that mouse sees it. But of course, by 11 o'clock, tension in the shoulders. By 3 o'clock, migrating headaches. Just putting ourselves down. I'm no good. Look at this. The guardian it awfuls. But uh, that's the mouse's point of view. But also while that mouse is experiencing that experience in high above, there's this eagle soaring around. Of course, that eagle sees way, way different than the mouse. Now, that eagle that watches the mouse, and this mouse is just tearing itself up, and I'm not going to make it, and it's no good, and there's no way. But finally, that eagle it sees things the mouse doesn't, so finally it shouts down to that mouse and says, Hey, mouse, lighten up. Get a life. I mean, there's other things. We can recover. We can uh, get sober. We can get well again. And so we use this fan for us to remember some of the things we're going to look at these next couple of days, we're going to look at an eagle's point of view. We're going to look at a point of view that maybe some of us have been stuck in, a mouse's point of view too long, and to look at another point of view. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to light this sage, and I'll kind of explain this uh, as, we, as we go around the circle. <clears throat> so you'll see we have these four colors. Then I will light this sage, and you'll see that this sage will turn to smoke. And it is a releasing of that smoke where the calming medicine from the sage plant is there. And then we run the fan through that smoke. And then we take and we go counterclockwise in a circle four times. And the reason we go four times, that is one complete circle that shows respect for the red direction, total respect for each of the four directions. And that's why we do that. So I will bring this sage around to each one of you, and if you choose to smudge with this. So she will draw that sage into her heart area and up over her head. Then as we do this, we need to realize that everything travels in a circle. Energy travels in a circle. All the planets travel in a circle. So interconnectedness travels in a circle. So as each person cleanses their inside, their heart, and their head, then the connectedness starts to travel in a circle. You cannot connect in a straight line. Energy doesn't work that way. 
And if you notice, there's a calmness now amongst ourselves. That means that circle is interconnected. We call that interconnected level, we, in our language, we call it netashniya. Netashniya is a feeling. So it's like when our eyes meet, that's a first level connectedness. Then if you notice, there's a second later, there's a feeling goes across. And that's what we acknowledge. That level is called netashniya. That's the interconnectedness. And that's the level that we want to get everyone to get um, before we start. So at this time, uh, I would like us now to look at the next step in this journey to uh, recovery is a process, not an event. One of the things that we would like to explain is this process called a talking circle. And a talking circle is a very, it's a very ancient way that Native people used to meet and how they conducted themselves. So we want to talk about, because we believe that in this series, at certain places where there's breaks or you do process work, or you look at the steps, we believe it's very powerful to use a circle process to do that. So we would like to explain how to use a circle and what some of the simple guidelines are to make the circle work. First of all, we understand that energy travels in a circle. So that is a, a way that interconnectedness takes place. Now there's a couple of guidelines that will make the circle very powerful. One of the guidelines is to think that the circle is sacred, that the circle is given to us by the Creator, and we, we set in this circle, we must honor that because we are now sitting in harmony with how the Creator made the universe. The second thing we're supposed to think about as we form this circle is we need to remember this. Consciously, each participant needs to remember that who you see here, what you hear in the circle, when you leave the circle, leave that in the circle. And when the circle meets again, then always remember the circle is sacred, who you see there, what you hear there, when you leave there, leave it there. Now, if that rule is followed consistently, then there's certain blessings that come from the circle. The first gift or blessing that comes from the circle will be you will start to get a feeling of belonging. Like, and that's very, very important for the human being is to feel like you belong. In fact, it's very, very basic is uh, to feel you belong. Because if you don't feel you belong, see, then you feel the opposite. Nobody wants me. So automatically, if you follow those guidelines, the circle will give you that gift. You, you will eventually get that feeling of belonging. Then once you get the feeling of belonging, and you'll hear people say that. You know something? I feel like I belong to this circle because it's a place that you can come, you can start to share it, and you don't hear all the rumors and gossip or whatever. So you, got, you have this sense of belonging. Then the circle will give you the second gift, and that's the sense of trust. Once the circle gets to that level of sense of trust, it is at that point where you can start sharing. You can start saying things that you may find yourself in a circle that you never think you would share with anyone else. And where does that ability come from? Well, it comes from that interconnectedness. It comes from that circle. Now, one of the types of talking circles that we use is we always have an object. In this case, I will just use this eagle fan. Usually, the person facilitating the circle, of which, by the way, anyone can facilitate a circle. You do not have to have a degree in facilitating circles. But if you take a look at the circle and you look at the four directions, you have east, south, west, and north. Usually the facilitator, they will take this object and they will say, I'd like to welcome everyone to the circle. We're really honored that you'll be here. And we would ask them to say something in that, in that way. Then often what you'll see next is someone will light some sage, or you could use cedar, or you could use sweet grass. They will light some type of medicine, one of those three usually. And then they will bring that around, and the next thing they will do is they will smudge everyone. Then the facilitator will remind everyone that the circle is sacred, that who you see here, what you hear there, when you leave there, leave it there. They will tell that. Then the facilitator may start talking about a subject. So for example, in this series, There'll be times when you'll say, okay, we're going to talk about step one, or we're going to talk about unmanageability. But you'll, the facilitator will pick a subject. Now, one of the types of circles, 
is when the facilitator is done, usually the facilitator will set to the left of the eastern door. So you leave a little space in the eastern door. The facilitator sets just to the left of the eastern door. Then when it's time to start sharing, then this facilitator would hand this feather or the object, could be a talking stick, to the person on his or her left. Then that person would talk. Now when that person is talking, no one else can speak. They say, honor the feather or honor the object. So you let that person have their say. Then when they're done, they'll pass it to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, until it goes all the way around. Now the circle, in that type of talking circle, you can't time it. But it has to make a complete trip around it. You cannot go halfway and say, oh, hours up. Got to go. It has to come all the way around in order for you to use a talking circle correctly. So let's say the feather comes all the way around, and then somebody on, the, say, maybe four or five people down and say, I, ha I want to say something. Then you pass this feather around to that person, let them speak, then you pass the feather around person to person to bring it back. It always must go in a complete circle. That's called a talking circle. Now there's another type of circle that can be used. This one can be timed. The other one cannot. So the facilitator would do the same thing. They would start with the object. But when they were done speaking, instead of handing the object to the person to the left, they would take this feather and they would lay it back in the center. You could sometime maybe use like a little table, put a red cloth on it. So then what that is, is when you feel moved to speak, so then you would say, I'll speak next. So you come up and grab the feather and then you go back and you sit down and then you could speak. Then you, when you were done, you bring it back to the center. Then maybe another person say, well, I want to say something. So that is a different type of talking circle that you can time it. So the person, because sometimes you're in group or you're, you're timing things. So it's at that point where you can uh, say, well, we, we're going to end this now. And then you end the, end the circle. And you end the circle by repeating to the people. You ask them, Remember that the this circle was sacred. Would you honor that? What you heard here, who you saw it, what they said, would you leave it here? And then the circle is over. So during this series, we'll be asking a number of times when you'll see us, um, where you're going to stop to process certain things, we'll be asking you, we're providing a methodology of circle talking, of circle thinking to help with these events. So we just wanted to explain this talking circle uh, part uh, that we'll be using throughout the series.